Hey everyone, it's Josh from Carney Media Group and the Music Tech Help Guy YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna check out the Earthworks DK3 drum mic kit. This is a set of three mics. It's two overheads and then a kick mic. I just wanna send a huge thanks out to Earthworks for sending this over for me uh, and also being very patient with me because with coronavirus, I've pretty much been unable to go up to the studio for almost three months now. So with things opening back up, I'm finally able to get back up to the studio and do a review on these. So as I said, the kit includes three mics and each one has their own bag. They each come with their own mic clip and their own windscreen. The first two are a pair of SR25s. These are meant to be used for your overheads or for your cymbal accent mics. These have a frequency response of 20 hertz to 25,000 hertz. They're a cardioid polar pattern with a max input of 145 dB SPL. And then you have your SR20 LS, another condenser mic. This is intended for the kick drum, and in this video, I'm gonna use it as my kick out mic. There's also a myth about uh, diaphragm size and being able to pick up low frequencies. With dynamic mics, it's true. If you have a larger capsule or a, a larger diaphragm, it'll pick up low frequencies better. But with condenser mics, it's not necessarily true. So don't be misconstrued about the small capsule on this mic. This has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It's also a cardioid polar pattern and has a max input of 150 dB SPL. Now, this kit can be used as a complete kit if you just wanna do a simple uh, two overhead and a kick out mic or even a kick in mic. Really, if you think about the most important mics in any drum setup, it's gonna be the overheads, possibly room mics, and then the kick drum. If you position your overheads correctly, you should be able to hear the snare and toms and hi-hat in the overheads as well. And as most of you guys already know, a lot of classic drum recordings were done with like three mics or sometimes even two mics. A lot of the old Zeppelin stuff was done with just a pair of overheads and a kick mic. And if you go back to the Beatles, you have drum recordings that were made with like one or two mics, just a single overhead and a single kick mic. Or you can use these as part of a larger setup, which is mainly what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna use this as my kick out. These will be my overheads, and then I'll have separate snare mics, tom mics, and a separate kick in mic. So let's get up to the studio and set up some drums and check these out. So we're up at the studio now and I've got the whole kit set up. And before I play any musical examples, let me just give you a rundown of the entire drum setup. Of course, I have the SR25s as a spaced overhead pair. That's gonna be the core of the drum sound here. I've got the SR20 LS on the kick out and an Audix D6 on the kick in. For snare, I have a Shure SM7B and a Beta 87A which is a super cardioid condenser, just to pick up the brighter tones of the snare. And for the first two toms, I have these Sennheiser E604s. They're clip-on mics, they're really convenient. And for the floor tom, I put an MD421, although she didn't actually play the floor tom at all in the song. So I just completely cut it from the mix. You're not hearing this mic at all. The song was pretty hi-hat heavy, so I added a Shure Beta 57A for the hi-hat. And normally I would use the 57A on the snare and the 87A on the hi-hat, but I flip-flopped them here because I intentionally wanted a dynamic mic to avoid bleed in the hi-hat as much as I could. Although the Beta 57A is barely in the mix in these examples anyway. And then lastly, I have a pair of Peluso P12 tube mics in a Blumline configuration for the room mics.
Now let's hear all of the mics in a mix with guitar in, and then I'll play a separate mix with just the DK3 kit plus a Shure SM7B snare mic. So obviously more mics works better here. You get more definition and clarity on each drum. But if you're shopping around for drum mic kits, the tendency might be to buy a dynamic set with kick, snare, and tom mics first with no overheads. I made the same mistake myself when I was younger and trying to record drums for the first time. I spent all my money on the close mics and then I ended up having to buy some cheap garbage overheads and that's exactly what the recording sounded like, cheap garbage. So I promise you that the overheads are way more important than the close mics in terms of capturing the entire kit. I really like the high end on these. They're really great for picking up the cymbals. The only problem here is that because I used a spaced pair, the snare and toms don't quite get the emphasis that they need. You can try using a different pattern like XY or angling the mics at the snare or even the Glenn Johns method. That'll give you more definition on the snare and toms. But it's always a trade-off. Spaced pairs lack center definition and coincident and near coincident pairs will have center definition, but lack the stereo width. If you want to learn more about drum recording as a whole, including the Glenn Johns method, as well as several other overhead miking techniques, I actually did a course over at macprovideo.com just dedicated to drum recording techniques. I did one in Logic and in Pro Tools. So if you use a spaced pair like I did and you're trying to keep it simple and you're trying to limit the number of channels you're using, try just adding one more mic for the snare. An SM57 will work just fine. They're cheap and a lot of people already have those lying around anyway. I'm a big fan of the 7B on snare. That's just my personal favorite. It's not a requirement or even a typical use for that mic. You could also try recording the kit with the DK3 kit and then use a drum replacement tool to isolate the snare and toms and layer the sound with samples. Now I know some people are against drum sample replacement or drum sample layering, but just as a proof of concept, here's just the DK3 kit mics augmented with samples on the kick, snare, and toms. I'm using UVI's drum replacer plugin for this.
So that's the Earthworks DK3 drum mic kit. It's an incredible kit for the price for a standalone three mic kit or as a piece of a larger setup. Again, overheads and kick drum really are the core of your drum sound. Anything else you add to that is an accent or something extra. Earthworks is known for making really premium mics at a really premium price as well. The price on these is not too bad. They're $12.99 for a set of three. So they're not like ultra premium, but they're also not like budget home studio stuff. So if you're looking at getting into drum recording and you're not really sure where to start, start with a good set of overheads and a kick out. You can record just fine just that way with just those three mics and then add to that setup over time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. I'll leave links in the video description below where you can check out the DK3 kit. I'll also be reviewing uh, this mic here that I've been using for my voiceovers for a few months now. This is the SR314. It's an incredible uh, handheld condenser mic, also from Earthworks. I'll be reviewing this uh, shortly. As always, guys, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.